You calm the storm that surrounds me Just one word The darkness has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of heaven Just one touch My eyes are open to see My heart can help but believe There's nothing that our God can do There's not a mountain that He can't move Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can do Just one word You hear what's broken inside me And you revive every dream Just one touch I feel the power of heaven Just one touch My eyes are open to see My heart can't help but believe There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a mountain that He Sing. 
God remains to age till the earth may pass away. The word remains the same, yeah. Your history can prove there's nothing you can do. Faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting, say I will pray. do have some on the table in the lobby. Um, communion is something that we do here at Pantano Students every week, um, and it is a reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, that Jesus died for our sins, that his body was broken for us, that his blood was shed for us, and that way we wouldn't have to go through our life in pain and suffering because someone paid that for us. So. I'm going to lead us through a prayer and then I'm gonna give you a few minutes to reflect, to connect with God and think about what you could do to communicate with him better, how you can invite God back into your life or into your life, how you can share him with your friends and we will go from there, all right? God, thank you so much for Pantano students. Thank you for sending your son to die for our sins. I thank you that we no longer have to pay that price that you sacrificed everything for us and that we can walk freely in your name. I pray God that tonight we will feel your presence as we continue with worship, we'll feel your presence and that we will leave here better than when we came in.
my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other
Lord, thank you so much for Pantano students tonight. Thank you for worship. I pray, Lord, that Pastor Amy's message will touch the lives of these students. That no matter what their week was looking like, what their year is looking like so far, um, what their school semester is looking like, that tonight they're here to hear the words that you will place on their heart. I pray, God, for protection and safety over everybody in this room and those not here. And I pray all these things in your name. Amen. So we, first of all, happy Wednesday. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great week. It's the first day of fall, which I love fall. It's a little, it's a little different here. I'm dressed like it's 50 degrees and it's like 80. <laughs> but I'm trying really hard and I had a pumpkin spice latte this morning to help with that. Um, we are starting a brand new Wednesday night series tonight called The Grudge. And this now, this series is all about the topic of forgiveness. And I have a big ask for you guys over the next four weeks. I'm going to ask that during the message, we are focusing on our speaker. Now, I'm really excited about this series because we get to hear from more of our small group leaders. Last week, we got to hear from Paul, who is our eighth grade guys leader, and he did such a great job. You guys want to give it up for Paul one more time? We are so glad that we have some awesome leaders that are just wanting to share their heart with you guys and what is on their heart for these topics. Next week, we're going to hear from Erica, who is our eighth grade girls leader. And then, yes, let's clap for Erica. I'm really excited about it. And then the week after that, we're going to hear from David, who is our ninth grade guys leader. Now, I am super excited about all of these people. But what I'm going to ask of you guys, like I said, is to focus on our speaker these next few weeks. Now, I'm going to ask that you guys don't get up to use the restroom or to get water, unless you really have to. I understand you have to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. But what we're going to ask is that you guys go beforehand, just so... Um, your guys' attention can be on the speaker. We're gonna talk about some heavier topics when it comes to the topic of forgiveness. And I think it's a topic that can be so relatable across the board at any age. It looks different at each age, but I think this is something that is super applicable. Regardless, I'm really excited about this series and what it looks like. So tonight though, we are gonna be talking about some small things that can turn into really big things if we don't let go of them. But I want to ask you guys two questions. The first one is, have you ever offended somebody? <laughs> Many times, yes, me too. Uh, a lot of times, more, top, more times than I'd probably like to admit, even without the intent of doing so. But the other question I want to ask is, do you know anybody who gets really offended easily? Yeah. Yes. And I'm going to say yes, and I have a long list of people, but myself is definitely included on that list. I feel like I get offended really easily sometimes, but I work on it, guys. I really do. Um, but these days, I feel like people get offended super easily and over a multitude of things. It can be simple things like you text your friend something and you're really excited to tell them, but then your friend doesn't text back. And you're kind of like, why didn't you text back? I was so excited to tell you. Or, I, am, I honestly think this is worse. It's that slow text back. That text back where they have their red receipts on and you see that they read it and then you see the chat bubble, the little bubbles that start typing and then they stop and you're kind of like, what? And then you're thinking, why didn't they respond? What did I do wrong that they're not gonna respond to this? It can be social media related. Maybe somebody unfollowed you on Instagram. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I get really offended <laughs> when people unfollow me on Instagram, but the issue is not that they unfollowed me, the issue is that you have to go and check if they unfollowed you. Instagram does not tell you when somebody unfollows you, so there's an issue in itself right there is you're checking if somebody unfollowed you that once did. <laughs> but overall, where I'm at with this is that relationships and social media, and really across the board, it's really easy to get offended. And sometimes it's small things. 
and sometimes it's big things. But we live in this world where people get offended, and that's just where we're at. But again, I am not one to talk. I get offended so quickly, and not only do I get offended quickly, I hold on to things that definitely need to be held on, should not be held on to as long as I hold on to them. And I am infamous for bringing up old messages, keeping old text threads, because I can go back and say, you said this on this date at this time. Why did you say that about me? What did you say? I have proof, or, oh, I just spit, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, or I just remember conversations, and I'll bring it up like, oh, remember that one time that you said this? That really hurt my feelings. Do any of you guys know people that do that? Yes, it's okay. It's okay if you are that person. But what does it, because I'm that person sometimes. But what does it look like when we hold on to these feelings for too long? What does it turn into? It turns into a grudge. And the other day, I was on Instagram actually, my old professor had posted a quote on his page and I was perfect timing, honestly. I was sermon prepping and I saw this and I was like, I have to screenshot that and post it. And it's, he posted a quote from Timothy Keller, who is a pastor and a theologian and apologist in Manhattan. And it says this, holding a grudge against someone means you think you know what they deserve and you take it upon yourself to give it to them. Yes. This is the definition I'm going to be using today as we start talking about grudges and what that looks like as believers and what forgiveness looks like in that context. But I wanna start with this, guys. It's not a kingdom win when we are constantly holding on to things and feelings and holding a grudge against somebody. And what I mean by that is that the kingdom of God does not grow when we hold grudges because that is not what we are called to do. In fact, our calling is too big to hold on to little things. The calling that God has given each and every one of us as believers does not include our time being used to be angry, bitter, and hurt over some things. But here's what I'm not saying, and I wanna be very clear about this. I am not saying that your feelings aren't valid because your feelings are so valid. And it's okay to feel things deeply. And I'm not saying you can't be upset over something that has hurt you. Because I have been there, I've been so hurt so many times, and I have lived in that hurt, and I have lived in that sadness and bitterness and anger. And I'm not saying it's okay to live there, but your feelings are valid. What I am saying, though, is that the Lord has given each of us this call on our life. And it cannot be lived out when we hold on to these feelings and when we hold grudges. And he makes that so clear. I want to open up to James 1 today, which is in the New Testament. It's towards the back, if you guys have your Bibles. Um, I love the book of James. I talk about this all the time if I open up the book of James. I just love it so much. <laughs> I find the book of James encouraging and convicting and challenging. And so we're going to look at James 1, verses 19 through 20, and it says this. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Now, I really want to focus on that last part of this verse. And it says, human anger does not produce righteousness that God desires. And if you guys get anything from tonight, or yes, from tonight, that is what I want you guys to get out of this, is James 1.20, is that God calls us to righteousness, and he desires that for our lives, and that doesn't come from anger. But tonight's message is technically called, I'm over it. And we are going to dive deeper into this idea of what it really looks like to get over the things that hurt us. And the things that hurt us when we are angry and it's stuff that comes from when we are offended or when we even offend other people. And the question that stands is how do we as followers of Christ get over this grudge that we have 
against somebody else? And the answer is pretty simple in my opinion, but we are going to fill that gap with love. If you guys open your Bibles back up to Proverbs 10, there's a verse that says this, hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers all wrongs. Now, I wanna give you guys this word picture because there is this gap. There's this gap that we have between our interactions and our reactions with other people. For instance, this is the interaction. You share with a friend something so deeply personal about what's going on in your life. Maybe it is who you are really crushing on and who you really like and you want anyone to know, but you want to tell this one friend because you know they'll understand. But then, your friend, and none of us have ever done this, right? Your friend goes and tells somebody else what you just told them. And you find out. Now, here is where that gap comes in. <laughs> There's this gap of how you can react to this interaction. You just found out that somebody you trusted just told somebody else something that you didn't want anyone to know. That hurts. Like, plain and simple, that really hurts. And by the looks of some of your faces, I'm sure you guys have felt that or been there. Whether you were the person that your secret got shared, or maybe you were the person that shared the secret. Regardless, it hurts all around. But there's this gap, and how do we fill it? How do we fill that interaction gap? But like James says, God desires us to produce righteousness. And we cannot produce righteousness if we choose to fill the gap with a grudge. We have to fill that gap between interaction and reaction with love. But here's the truth in this situation, guys. Satan, he wants so badly for us to fill that gap with a grudge. He wants us to fill it with holding whatever the fault was against that other person. He wants us to fill that gap with accusations and lies and hurtful words and hatred, which sometimes it's so tempting to do that. It is. But God wants us to fill this gap with love. But what does it really look like to fill the gap with love? Love gives the benefit of the doubt. Your friend doesn't text you back. Maybe their phone was dead. Maybe they were busy. Some people genuinely aren't on their phones 24 hours a day. <laughs> I'm not one of those people. <laughs> um, but maybe your friend shares this secret with somebody else. Giving them the benefit of the doubt looks like it just came out. It happens. And I've been there, and maybe you guys have been there too. But love allows us to give grace to those who need it in the same way that God has given grace to us in so many bigger situations. But love also allows us to remember the times when grace was given to us by the people around us. If you were that person sharing the secret and you're still friends with the secret, with the friend that shared that secret, that is showing a lot of grace. But like I said, I am still figuring this out. And there are many times when I hold on to something that meant so little in the larger scheme of things. But I want to share kind of a funny story with you guys. It's kind of funny. It's funny now. <laughs> when I was in high school, I um, dated this guy. We dated for a really, really great two and a half weeks. <laughs> Such a good two and a half weeks. <laughs> and in, in those two and a half weeks, which by the way, strictly texting, not even a phone call. Um, <laughs> my friend was super excited for us. She was like, I'm so glad that you're dating this really cool dude. She was so pumped about it. She kept saying how cool this guy was and how, like, how great it was that I was dating him. The truth was, guys, she also really wanted to date a cool dude. What cool dude it was, who knows? But these two and a half weeks go by, such a great two and a half weeks over, over texting, really. Um, <laughs> and the end of the two and a half weeks pass, and the cool dude, he breaks up with me over, the, over text. I know, 
pretty low, pretty low, and ends up asking out my friend who wanted to date the cool dude. And my friend says yes. I know, the horror. It might be, but here, okay, it might, okay, so here we go, there, exactly. The horror, and my 13 or 14 year old self was probably pretty hurt at the time. I'm not gonna lie. But this was one of the first times that I can remember I really had to make this choice on how do I bridge this gap. That was my best friend. And this was the guy that I was dating. I say dating because were we dating? No. Um, but this could have gone a lot of different ways. Maybe I say, we're not friends anymore. Or there could have been hurtful words on both sides of our stories. Or I could have held on to those feelings for a really long time. But in reality, in typical Amy fashion, I shed some tears, of course, and I think I said probably something along the lines of, well, that was ideal, and I moved on, and we were still friends, even throughout the relationship. How long were they together? So, <laughs> good question. So, here's where I'm getting with that, though. If I could go back to, to my 13-year-old self, I probably would have communicated my feelings a little differently. I would have. But you know what I would not change? I would not change the fact that I didn't end that friendship. Because God does great things when we choose to bridge this interaction gap with love. So I'm getting there. So there's this wonderful photo, and I've shared this photo before. This is my friend Elizabeth. She was one of my best friends in the entire world. This was taken in May at her wedding. Um, she got married to this awesome guy named Caleb, who was not the cool dude. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> and I got to stand by her at her wedding day last May. And in 88 days, she gets to stand by me at mine. And again, this seems so silly. We were 13-year-olds. We didn't even know dating was. And this was so long ago. But that decision to remain friends and to fill this gap that could, have been filled, that could have been filled with so many things was filled with love. And because of that, I have a forever friend. And it's a great Christ-centered friendship. But I want to ask you guys, what does bridging that gap with love look like for you? Whether it's that friend that doesn't text you back because maybe they were busy. It's not that they don't like you or that they found someone better. Or if it's that friend that shared your secret, how do you bridge that gap with love? In Ephesians 4, it says this. It says in Ephesians 4 too, be patient with one another, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. It's inevitable that we are going to fault each other. We are. Again, sometimes we don't intend to. And I can assure you of that. There are so many times, so many times that I have been hurt and I know that person did not mean to hurt my feelings and vice versa. There are a lot of times when I have hurt somebody else's feelings and I know I didn't mean to hurt their feelings. It was not my intent. But the truth is somebody is going to get offended at some point in your life and maybe it's you or maybe you did that to somebody else. But because of our love, the love that we receive from Christ, that allows us to move on from that, and we can give grace in that situation. And I'm sure you're thinking, though, what about those people that intentionally try to hurt our feelings? Because there are lots of those people. There are. People will try to hurt your feelings. But the, con the conscious decision to let it go is a form of forgiveness. And that's really hard. It's a lot harder said than done. And in Proverbs 19, it says this. I'm looking at the wrong verse. It says, sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. I am not saying that what happened, what was said, didn't happen. And I'm not saying that you have to forgive and forget. In fact, I don't like that advice. Because we're not going to forget what somebody said or what somebody did to us that really hurt our feelings. 
but you can forgive and move forward in whatever way that that looks like for you. Our calling is to reflect who Jesus was. Can you imagine if Jesus held on to everything that offended him? Or can you imagine if he held on to every hurtful thing that was said or done to him? How would that look when we are reflecting who he is? What does that look like if that's how he did that? But the truth is, the mission of Jesus was to show the love of the Father through his life here on earth. Because Jesus' calling was too big to hold on to little things. In the same way that our calling is too big to hold on to little things. And I know it's super hard sometimes to just say, I'm over it. It's really hard. It's also hard for the person that hurt your feelings, whether it was intentional or not intentional. It's hard for them to swallow their pride and say, I'm really sorry, I did not mean to do that. But how do we say I'm over it, and what does letting go of that grudge look like? But like I said at the beginning, is that we fill the gap with love. And I want to end with these questions for you guys tonight as you enter into your small groups. I want to ask if there are things that you have been holding on to where you can start filling this gap with love. And I want to ask if there are people that you may need to forgive or talk to to start filling this gap with love. I'm going to pray us out, and then we are going to enter into a time of small group. If you are unsure of which small group to go to, come and find me, and I will send you that way. If you guys can buy your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much just for another Wednesday night. We are so thankful that you are a God who gives us grace and a God that has sent his son to redeem us. Lord, you are so good and you are so faithful. I pray that these students can lean into letting go of any type of grudge that they may be holding on to right now. And I pray that these next couple of weeks that they just open their hearts to what you have to share with them, Lord, and what it looks like to forgive the people in their lives or even the people that aren't in their lives anymore. Lord, you are so good, and I pray that we have a great rest of our night and week. In your name we pray, amen.